A histogram is just a special kind of column graph. In fact, that's basically what histogram means. I went and dug it up. Uh, it has to do with um, this part here, this histo, this um, prefix, it has to do with anything that's upright, like for example, the masts and sails of a ship, right? So it's a column graph, as you can see, uh, but it has a couple of minor differences. So underneath here, number one, you'll notice, I sort of um, pointed this out to you when we were doing column graphs before. Do you see there are no, gra um, no gaps between the different columns? Do you see that? Okay. So it's got no gaps between columns. So that's a little minor difference. And secondly, you will see there's a, gra a gap. I keep saying gap. There's a gap at the beginning, right? So there is a gap with the axis, the vertical one. OK, so apart from that, it's just a regular column graph, as you'll see. Now, when you get your data, um, what you're putting up onto the vertical scale is pretty much always frequency. So in fact, sometimes you'll see these called frequency histograms. This is, you remember how we said, sometimes you choose this for vertical, that for horizontal. You'll always see frequency over here, okay? Now, if I take the midpoint of all of these columns, okay? So you might want to get another color in here. So if you join the midpoints, And you also take that line which joins the midpoints and you connect it down to the horizontal axis. Okay, so join the midpoints and the horizontal axis. What you've made, as is labeled up on the screen, is a frequency polygon because you have a shape that connects everything. So this is like a fancy line graph, okay? Um, this is the one time, some people asked me this le last lesson, this is the one time where your data here, it, it starts here, but actually you're going to join it down at the bottom, so it's a polygon. Okay? So if you join the midpoints and the horizontal axis, um, that's what you do to create a frequency polygon. Okay. Ash, question? Yeah, I'm so glad you're asking. So when we just have a normal, over here, normal frequency, okay? Then yes, it's the midpoints as demonstrated. But there is a case when we don't do the midpoints, but we do the corners. So I'm gonna show that to you in just a second. Just want you to get, this is a frequency histogram, and therefore this is a frequency polygon. Question? Um, what is the use of having a frequency polygon? Well, what's the use of having a line graph? What did we use those for before? When were they useful? Yeah, good. If there's a trend or like a pattern from like all the different temperatures, how frequently I get them, that's all it's about. Can you not tell that from the columns? I think you're just trying to make it more obvious. And sometimes, maybe what you want is just the frequency polygon, and you might not draw the original histogram in at all. Like just, to, it might be too much information for you, so you just want to make it a little cleaner to read. Okay. All right. Did anyone else have any questions on the frequency histogram or frequency polygon? Polygon. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so now, um, this is what, um, who asked? Who asked about Ash when we were talking about, well, where are we joining? Um, I want to show you this. <coughs> so, this is ever so slightly different. Ever so slightly different. This is not a frequency histogram. It's not a frequency polygon. Have a look at the vertical axis. It's not frequency. It's cumulative frequency, which is why this thing is climbing. Okay. So now underneath here, this is just a regular frequency histogram and polygon. I've run out of space here. But if you can make a little subheading for me, which is not frequency but cumulative frequency. History, histograms and polygons. You've got some minor differences here, right? So let's look at what's common first. Um, you've still got columns which don't have gaps, and you still have a gap with the vertical axis. But what's different? Um, have a look at my polygon and see where it joins, okay? I'm not at the midpoints anymore. I'm not here, 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 and so on. I'm at the corners. Um, the way I describe it is I'm joining the top right corner of every column. Does that make sense? So I've still got these features here. But to make a cumulative frequency polygon, 
to create a cumulative frequency polygon. Instead of joining the midpoints, I'm going to join the top right corners of each corner. One last thing on this guy, because you can see it's going to end up all the way up at the top, okay? This is meant to be a thing that's climbing. Um, presumably, if I had higher temperatures on here, 24, 25, 26, etc., um, this would keep on going up and up and up. So for that reason, rather than this one, which comes back down to the bottom, okay? Because look, this is the shape of things, right? Um, in the cumulative <laughs> frequency polygon, if this diagram continued, it wouldn't go down. It's meant to accumulate. It's meant to get bigger, right? So that's why you can see it ends up there and it doesn't return, okay? So you can say, don't rejoin the horizontal axis. Now, this graph comes up so much, so many people use it, that it gets its own special name. And maybe you've heard the special name before. Does anyone know what it's called? It starts with an O. Wait, wait, wait. It's kind of, it's very, very close. Um, yeah, I don't really know how to pronounce this. <laughs> o o um, I say, I, I say O Give, but I mean, you can say O Give if you like, because that's, or, yeah, I've never heard anyone say O Jive. <laughs> someone told me in roll call this morning that it was O Jive. So. Yeah, to be honest, I have no idea how you pronounce it. So long as you spell it right, and you know what it's talking about, because you pretty much won't have to say it, except to your friends. Um, again, I'm going to pronounce it for a guy. All it is, is another name for a cumulative frequency polygon. That guy, the green line. Okay? Right, now, one more point before I um, read this notice to you. Remember I started off by saying history is kind of just like a special column graph. Why do we have these? They're not that different, okay? I will show you why. Um, in the rest of the world, this is what people think of when they think of a histogram. Okay. Now, I want you to look at it. What strikes you as strange about this chart, this graph? It's in chunks. There are chunks. There are chunks. Um, the unusual thing about the chunks, I mean, just coming back, this has chunks too, right? Like, they're, they're chunks. But they're but group Yeah, chunks. okay. So, there's a couple of things happening going on at the same time. Um, they're uneven. And the reason they're uneven is because these things down here, thinking back to like last week, a few lessons ago, these are not individual scores, they're... It's not yeah, it's a range. These are classes or intervals. You might remember those words from before when we looked at group data, okay? Now, what's going on here? The idea is that, okay, people aged one to six, how many are there? People aged six to eight, people aged eight to 11. You have different ranges. The width of a column means there are more people there, okay? So to compensate, this guy over here is actually not um, eight high. There's not eight people who are aged one to six. Because it's wider, this is gonna go up. This is actually one, two, three, four, five squares. You can actually just see them, right? So there's actually five times eight. There are 40 people in this class, right? A bigger rectangle means more people. This is trying to get away from the um, misleading graphs we were looking at before, where people use area and it's a bit sneaky or volume. Have a look, how many people are aged six to eight? How would you read it? There are going to be, it's 20 high, but it's too wide, so it'd be 40. And you could go by the same principle and say, um, this goes up to 13, and that's three wide, so that'd be 39 people, okay? Now, if that feels weird and confusing to you, then you're not alone. The people who designed the New South Wales Mass was said, that's crazy and confusing. Don't care if the rest of the world does that. We're not going to deal with histograms that have this weird funky thing down here. Good. So that's why, that's why, for us, for our intents and purposes, they're basically just column graphs without gaps. Okay, that's basically all it means. Okay. However, if you go out in the real world or you go to another country, right, and they're like, hey, yeah, this thing, right? That's a histogram, but the width is meaningful, as opposed to for us, the width could be anything we like. Okay.